Welcome to this video that's an introduction to using WordPress for blogging. Now, this video was created specifically for a course at the University of Saskatchewan where WordPress is currently being used as the blogging platform so that's why uh, we're focused on WordPress here. In this video we're going to look at the dashboard, we're going to look at um, things that you can change to the appearance of your blog such as the theme or how you can use widgets for the sidebar how you can create pages for your your blog and how you can create new blog posts or edit the posts you have and um, a little bit on commenting so how to work with the comments how to moderate them how to add your your own comments to your blog so we're gonna get started by looking at the dashboard on your your blog and this is really where you're going to do the bulk of the work on your blog uh, most the other people, your readers, won't see this. This is just where you end up doing your work. Now, on your blog, uh, on the dashboard, there is uh, a button over here for posts and one for media, and this is for pages and comments. Um, but we're going to look at appearance actually first. So, um, on your your blog, you can make a lot of customizations actually to what your blog looks like. So you can, there's a number of themes that you can choose from and you can change things like um, the overall look and colors. So in some cases, the picture that goes up here, what goes in your sidebar over here. So those are a few things that you can work with. Um, under appearances on the dashboard, so if you had clicked on that link, you would see a few things like themes and widgets and there are a number of themes that you can choose from. You can look at, uh, you can go searching for something for a keyword that might be there. You can find things by the color, or certain colors, or how many columns you want. But you want to pick a theme that's going to be aesthetically pleasing as opposed to just one that might just be your favorite color. You want it to be easy for people to read um, in terms of contrast. You want it to be easy to navigate. So those are really important things. You can also work with widgets. Now widgets let you add things to the sidebar of your, your blog. So you can add maybe a search box or what uh, a list of the categories that your blog posts fall under. You can add some text. So if you have code you want to bring in from, say, a third-party widget like Twitter or something, then you can add it there. You can have an area maybe for recent posts or recent comments, put in a tag cloud. Now what widgets you have available to you actually does depend on what theme you're working with, so they will vary by your theme. The widgets that you choose and what you do with them will show up, depending on the theme you pick, um, somewhere as a sidebar. It might be that you've picked, you have a sidebar just on one side, or you might have a sidebar on this side, or you might have sidebars on both. And so how this is going to look will depend on what theme you have and what widgets you've, you've chosen to work with and where you've chosen to put them. So um, you can also create a number of pages on your blog. Now, when you start, you automatically have this home page right here. But you can add additional pages. So this actually is a screenshot of a site I have set up for an undergraduate course I've taught a couple of times and it's ETAD 470, which is the design and use of online learning resources in the College of Education at the University of Saskatchewan. And I use this as my class website. So there is the home, which is the blog, and uh, at the very least I add new resources that I have found throughout the week there for students that, that might be interesting to the students, might be useful for them, or anybody else who comes across the site. Um, the About page has information about the course. I have my course syllabus there. The weekly readings are all listed there and links to them. I have assignments along with my rubrics. Uh, the network is uh, it's, it's a course on educational technology and using social media in, in education. The network is some suggested people that they might want to follow their blogs or on Twitter. Um, media is might be some YouTube videos that I've shown in class, and tools are any of the, the tools that we've, we've worked with in class that I've mentioned. 
So you can, you can see, you can add a number of pages depending on what you want to do with your blog. So you might have your blog and you might have an About Me page to tell people who you are. You might have a link to some other website that you have at the university or somewhere else. You might have your CV there or some other information about you or resources that you think your readers would find useful. So on your dashboard, if you go into Pages, which is a link right here on the left side, you'll get a list of all the pages you've created. So there's the About page and the Syllabus page and the Readings. And you'll notice under Assignments, there's actually some pages that have dashes in front of them. And so those are sub-pages. And using the theme that I'm using for that site, they appear in a drop-down menu from each of those. And so this is at the first level of a drop-down, and so there's the blog assignment, the podcast assignment, and the uh, acceptable use policy web quest. But then there's these sub-ones as well, even sub of those, and those are, um, these are parts of the web quest activity uh, that fall under, under that page. So there's, there's main pages, sub-pages, and then there's sub-sub-pages in a sense. And so you can do that when you're setting up pages for yourself. So to add a new page, if you go to Pages, you can go to Add New, and you're going to get a window that looks just like this. And it's really quite simple to work with. You put the title of your page up in this box, and you put the content of your page in this box. Now everything except for your home page, which is your blog, is actually going to be a static page. So it's not something that you go in and add posts to, but rather you can go in and just make changes to the page itself. So when you're working with this, You've got your title, you've got your content in there. You can see it uses an editor that is what's typically called a what you see is what you get editor or a WYSIWYG editor. And so it's really quite simple to work with. You put your text in the box here and then you can highlight it and bold it or italicize it or um, you can make lists whether they're numerical or, or just bulleted lists. You can uh, put quotes in, which will sort of indent a specific quote that you want to put as opposed to just a regular quote in a sentence you want to really have a, as a call out. You can um, add links. You can do all sorts of things on this page. You can save the draft if you're not ready to publish it yet, although WordPress will regularly do an autosave. You can also preview, which is this button right next to it. So you can preview it right there. You can see what the status of it is. So it's in draft stage. Um, when it is published, it's currently listed as going to be public, but you can change that to if you wanted to keep it private for a while, but still have it published. Um, you can also schedule it when it's going to be published, which you can also do with your posts, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But you can schedule it to not show up for a certain number of days or weeks. It's put a specific date and time in. And so if you don't want students to see, necessarily see some part of an assignment that you flip posted there, or you don't want somebody to see a page you've created until an event for that is coming up, you can actually schedule when it's going to appear. When you're ready to publish it, then you hit the Publish button. If you change the date in here, this button's going to change to Schedule. Once you've uh, either scheduled it or published it, this button, anytime you see it, is going to say Update. So you can make changes anytime you want, and you just hit the Update button, and the page will be updated. This drop-down menu here, I'm actually going to get to in just a minute, so let's, let's have a look at that. Um, this drop-down menu actually lets you pick where you want it to go. So do you want it to be a main page, and it has no parent, or do you want it to be a sub-page of something? And you can pick that right there. So, um, but this is, we're talking about blogs, and so the main part of a blog is actually the blog posts. And so to create a new post, you have a couple of options. When you're logged into your blog, you'll see a bar up here. Mine says, Howdy, Heather M. Ross, because that's who I am. And it says the name of my course and the sites. And this will show me if I have any comments waiting for me to moderate. But there's also this New button. And you can go click on that, and it's going to be a drop-down for a new post or new media. Uh, you can add a page here this way as well, New Page. And if you click on Post, that's one way of adding a new post to your blog. Another way is on your dashboard down the side you'll see a link for posts and you can go see all the posts you've done so you can go back and and review them or edit them um, or you can add a new post or you can go look at posts by categories or by tags 
for our purposes we're looking at add a new add new so you can click on add new you're going to get a window that looks a lot like this although the title bar is cut off in the screenshot I made and it does look a lot like when you go to add a uh, a page and so you put your title in and then you can write your blog post and you can add links and you can um, add images you can bold and italicize just like you can on a page and down here you're going to see categories. Now this is only just a short list of my categories. I actually have quite a few. And you can check off what categories you want your post to appear in. You can schedule it just like I said before with a page. You can schedule that. You can change the visibility. This shows what the status is. You can preview your post. And when you're ready to, you can either schedule it or publish it. So, um, you can also create links in your post, and to do this, you type in the text that you want the link to come from, and you highlight it, and then you're going to see this little icon right up here, and it looks like a little piece of chain, and that's to create a link. And if you've already created a link, the one next to it is to actually break the link, so you don't really want it to be a link anymore. This actually gives you a better view down here of the categories that I was just talking about as well. So, but let's get back to creating a link. So, you have your text, you've highlighted it, you click on that little link button there and you're gonna get a pop-up window that looks like this and you're gonna um, if it's a different an outside site that you want to link to you can actually just paste that address of that site right in there or you can pick a page from something that is already existing on your site and you can just select that for your link and if you want you can search for the page there if you click on this checkbox right here that's gonna make sure that whatever, um, I keep losing my cursor, sorry, um, whatever link people click on is going to open in a new window or tab so it won't take them away from the post that they read, they were reading on your site, which is a handy thing. And then when you're all done, you're going to click add link. Now, um, to add an image to your post, we're going to talk about how to add an image where you want to upload the file or the file is already on your site. I'm going to create a separate video on how to do that with Flickr. Um, so just putting the code in from a, wet, a picture that you found on Flickr. So to do this, you're going to put your cursor and click into the post roughly where you want the image to appear. And you can hit this Add Media button that's right there. And you'll get a pop-up window that says Insert Media. And you have two options here. You can select an image that you had already uploaded or you can go to upload files and pull something off your computer. Now you get to put in a title um, for the image there and you get to put in your alt text. Now your alt text is important because if somebody is using a screen reader, let's say they're visually impaired, they can't see the picture but their reader will say what that alt text actually says so they'll have an idea of what the image is that you've put on your page. Uh, also, you can control how you want it aligned, so do you want it to be in the center of the page or off to the left or the right. And once you've done all that, you can click on this button down here that says Insert into Post. And after you do that, you're going to get a picture that appears. If you click on it, you're going to see these two buttons. And this one actually does, just means to delete your, po your, um, your image. You don't really want it there, so you've changed your mind. You can delete it. And this one here, though, if you click on this, this is going to let you make some changes. So if you do that, you're actually going to get this window for your image, and it's going to show kind of how your image is situated in your text, although this isn't the real text, but it shows you the image. And you can go down this side, and you can say, oh, you know, instead of 100%, I want, only want it to be 90 or 70 or so forth percent of the size that it is right now. It's just a little too big. Here you've got that box for your, your alternative text and your title so you can make some changes there. Do you want the picture to link to something? Maybe uh, an, another site or do you just if you leave it as is it's going to link to a larger version of that picture probably that people can see. Under the advanced settings you're going to get more controlling about the, the size of your picture. Um, here you see the alignment there but under advanced you can do the size, the alignment, and if you need to add any padding around it so you want to create more room between the text and the image. And once you're done with that, you click on Update because the picture is already in there. And you'll see there's your image and there's that link we created earlier as well. So that's how you add a link and an image to your post. 
Finally, I want to look at comments. Now, if you go into your dashboard, there's a button down here for settings and one under there for discussion. So we're going to have a look at that because each of these control what happens to when somebody wants to comment on your blog. So you're going to get, um, you're going to let people um, comment on your blog and, but you also want to make sure that they, they have to include their name and an email address. So you want to check stuff off like that. Um, enable threaded comments so that makes it easier for people to follow who said what. Email me when anyone posts a comment. That's a good way to know when people are commenting. But um, you can also do it so that before a comment appears, the you have to have approved a comment by that author. So let's say I left a comment on your blog. The first time I did it, you'd need to approve my comment. But the second time, I would just be able to comment so that you wouldn't have to keep approving it if you trusted the person. Um, or you could do it so the checkbox above that actually says that uh, a comment always has to be approved regardless of whether somebody has commented on your blog before. I like to at least have that bottom one checked off so that helps to reduce some spam that might end up on your blog. Once people have left comments on your blog, this is where you, the screen where you go in and see that you can moderate them and there's going to be some buttons there. They're kind of hard to see here but they're going to let you, um, whether you want to approve it or put it in the trash or maybe even just uh, you've already approved it and you want to reply to what they said, you can go in and see all the comments that have been left. Oops, sorry about that. You can go ahead and see all the comments that have been left on your blog and, ever and what posts they were related to and you can always go back and make any changes that you want. Now you won't see this thing down here unless you move your cursor over that comment. So that's why you don't see it for any of these other ones. Finally, if somebody leaves a comment on your blog, you should really try to comment back, if some, especially if it's something like they've disagreed with you or they have agreed with you or they've added a new resource or whatever. Um, I'm trying to remember to always be respectful to people. Um, it, but it is a conversation, so it shouldn't just be that people comment and you ignore them. So that's important to remember. So if you go into the blog post and you click on whatever button would be there to see the comments, if you're logged into your blog, this a box that looks like this is going to come up and you type in your response in the box and then you post your comment. And they'll see that you've written back to them and it will appear right next to theirs. So that's it. That's just sort of a brief introduction to how to use WordPress for blogging. And there's, there's much more to it than that, but this is a good way to get started if you just want to start up a blog and start posting and adding a few pages, then this video should help you get there. And that's it. Thank you.